When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. The personal finance world is full of rules, things you should and shouldn't do with your money. And it leads to stress, frustration, competition, and honestly, makes you feel like you aren't doing enough, you don't have enough, and you'll never be able to fully be happy with your money situation. I am calling BS on that. If you have ever made a money mistake, which we all have, all right, let's be honest, this episode is for you. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Compton Gain, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. I grew up in a money-focused family. My dad had been in the financial industry ever since I was born, and it just wasn't unusual to talk about money or the stock market or something that was going on in the economy. That was just kind of our our dinnertime conversations, and I didn't really think anything of it, but I think even in that situation, there's still plenty of things that I just didn't learn how to do around money. And I think every family expects that somehow, magically, you're just going to learn how to budget, save, spend your money through almost like osmosis, that somehow you're supposed to just pick up at a young age what your parents did or didn't do or what you should or shouldn't do. But let's just be honest, 
that doesn't happen, right? It just doesn't happen. You have to figure this stuff out on your own and usually through some or a lot of trial and error. But that's what we need to talk about. We really need to talk about mistakes. We need to normalize making mistakes when it comes to money and normalize that we all pretty much go through the same things. We might just be dealing with different dollar amounts, but we all have had pretty much the same experiences or will have pretty much the same experiences. Now, of course, you could argue there's outliers to that situation, and I'm not going to deny that some people have experiences that it's hard for a lot of us to relate to. I'm not going to ignore any of that, but I'm I'm just speaking generally here. Most of us have experienced in some way, shape, or form some of the same things. And even if you feel like right now maybe you're on easy street, your job is going well, you've got good income, you don't have a lot of debt, life is looking like pretty darn good. If this is you, <laughs> A, you're really lucky, and I'd suggest you take some time today and just be seriously grateful for being in the situation that you're in. But for most of us, maybe even you listening right now, this isn't the current reality of things, or maybe this hasn't been the overarching theme of your life thus far. And I have found that there's lots of judgment this year around money mistakes, which is kind of surprising because this is really a WTF year all the way around. I don't really know any other word to practically describe this year. So there's been a lot of judgment and maybe it's self-imposed. Maybe you're putting judgment on yourself. Maybe you're thinking, well, what if I would have done this differently or what if I could do this differently and you're in some situation and you're just thinking, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know, this year is complete curveball. I don't know what to do. Or maybe there are other people, maybe your family members or someone you're in a relationship with that is passing judgment on things you have or haven't done with your money. And that's really where the riff comes up, I find, in relationships because they've made mistakes as well, right? It's not that we're pointing the finger at somebody else, but I just feel like judgment around money mistakes is so completely unnecessary. So if it's self-imposed right now, I want you to just remove that from yourself. Just, just take that away because it's just an unfair reality. Money mistakes are going to happen. There's no shame in where you're at as well. How much money you've got in your bank account or the mistakes you've made, there's no shame in it. And so if we don't start talking about these things and normalizing these things, that's how we start change, right? That's how we start to change the, the money language. We start to make these new rules around money. If we keep everything hidden in the dark, we don't talk about things, we get frustrated and angry at other people because we think they should have done something that maybe they didn't think they should do. That's how we keep breeding stress and fear and anxiety around money. And it's certainly how you can stay stuck in a particular situation and just not know how to wedge yourself out of it. So I just, I really want to normalize mistakes. In fact, we all make them. We just don't like to share about them. I know I've talked about it on this show before, but when I was a practicing financial planner and I worked for over 12 years with clients, I would see the same mistakes, if you want to call them that, over and over and over and over again. And I would see the same reaction. People would be afraid to share things with me, embarrassed to talk about things. And in essence, what it did was just keep them stuck. And I really had to work almost like a therapist to get in there and try and get to the root cause of why are you feeling this way? Where does this this feeling come from about money, this shame or this guilt or this anxiety? Like, can we actually practically trace it back? Can we trace it back to your family or to a relationship you're in or to just your own personal belief? Maybe sometimes you feel like, I just shouldn't have done that. I just shouldn't have made that mistake. I just should have known better. Well, how? How if we don't talk about money? How if we don't learn about money? How? How are you supposed to just magically know not to do this thing? 
So when I talk about it this way, I hope on the other end, you're either giggling or you got a smile on your face or, or you're like, yeah, exactly. Right, right. How? How was I supposed to know this? Because that's what I want you to take away from this episode that I have worked with hundreds and hundreds of people and I've seen the same things over and over and over again. So it's about time we just, we normalize this crap. <laughs> and I've, I've been open on this show about my own money mistakes. I will never lie to you. I will never tell you I've done everything perfectly. And if anybody has ever said that to you, they are completely lying to you because it's not true. Personally, I've been in debt, big sums, little sums. I've had student loan debt. I've had credit card debt. Uh, I had a mortgage, which I don't really consider debt, even though it is debt. That's a whole other uh, can of worms. But I've been in debt. I've owed people money. I, I've been there. I've also had great years financially, years where I'm like, yeah, right. Things are rolling. This is good. Things are good. And then I've had bad years where I'm like, what is happening? I don't, I don't know how to do all of this. And at 34, I went through a divorce and lost everything but my car, which I owed a ton of money on, and I had a suitcase full of my clothes. That's it. I walked away from my house. I walked away from my prized cookbook collection, um, all my stuff. I had um, vacation homes, all of it I had to walk away from. That's a whole other episode. I won't go into those details on this episode. But uh, basically, I was the income earner at that particular time. And in order to not owe someone a lot of money for a very long period of time, I walked away from things and it was hard and and yet it wasn't, right? I had to start over and between you and me, at times I found it really refreshing, which is which is crazy because it was like a starting over period. And there are times, it's certainly in the last few years where I thought, oh, I just, I want to get rid of all my stuff again and I just want to start over, not painfully and not in a lot of debt. But uh, that feeling was good, getting rid of everything and building back fresh. It taught me so much about myself. And it's a lot of the reason why I started to do this podcast, because I was starting to feel my own shame around mistakes that I should have known better being a money expert. But then when I can step back at it and look at it, I can see it through a different lens where I can say, I learned so much and the reason I was able to get through it the way I did was because I did know a lot about money. So if I'm going to talk about money mistakes, I want you to know that you are in present company of someone who's made a lot of them, who's learned a lot. And the upside is that I know the rules and strategies behind how to get yourself out of some mistakes and even though I'm a money expert, I still I still continue to make money mistakes because that's just human nature. We're humans, right? That we repeat things over and over again. We don't learn lessons. We learn sometimes, but a lot of times we have to repeat things over and over. So if I'm going to give myself a free pass to make money mistakes, I'm going to give you a free pass to do that as well. But the rub is in how do you learn from your mistakes? How do you grow from your money mistakes? You need a toolkit. You need a money toolkit that you can go into and you can pull out from when you hit a roadblock, when a money mistake happens. That's the key. So rather than just continuing to make mistake after mistake after mistake, right? If you have this money toolkit, you're like, ah, I made a money mistake. Okay, no biggie, whatever. Now I'm going to go in the toolkit and I'm going to pull out what I need in order to get around that mistake or to maybe make that mistake a little bit better or smooth it out a little bit. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about those seven money mistakes that I'm going to say they're okay for you to make. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news... 
Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Want to know the number one money question I'm asked? It's how to get started investing without being overwhelmed. So if you're asking yourself the same question, then you have to check out the Investing for Beginners podcast. The host, Dave and Andrew, they break down investment terms and strategies in a way you can finally understand. I love that they're making investing accessible and they have an entire podcast dedicated to helping you invest better. Even if you're not ready to start investing, they explain the stock market and financial updates so you can really understand what is being said on the news. If you're ready to learn more about investing, I'd recommend you start with two of my favorite episodes. Listener Q&A, how do you start investing with a thousand bucks, where they explain how you get started right away, and back to basics of building your portfolio, where they explain how to build a portfolio from scratch. The Investing for Beginners podcast is a great way to start expanding your relationship with money. Find Investing for Beginners podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So mistake number one getting into debt. We have to we have to talk about getting into debt. 
because I think it's okay. It's okay to live life with debt. Now, you don't want to be one of those people that just chronically keeps getting into debt and certainly not someone who pays off the debt and then gets back into debt and, you know, so, so much so that it's a yo-yo. Um, because there are points in your life where you're going to pay off your debt, you're going to get out of debt, and then something's going to happen and you're going to get back into debt. And that's okay. I just don't want it to be a chronic, like manic uh, time where you're in debt, out of debt, in debt, out of debt, in debt, out of debt. So that's what we're trying to avoid. And if you get into debt, don't panic. Everybody, everybody in this whole entire world is going to have some situation in their life where they get into debt. And even, I mean, there's a movement now of, and I know I've had people on this show as well, and I try to be a little bit sensitive about it, but there's this movement of sharing all these stories of all these people who've paid off debt. It is an amazing accomplishment. So I'm never taking it away from somebody because you do, you have to do a lot of work to go through the process to get out of debt. It takes a lot of money mindset work. It takes a lot of compromise, a lot of doing things differently, changing your habits, reworking your system. It it takes a lot of that, right? But I think if we just focus on highlighting people who have paid off debt and got out of debt, it might send the wrong message, right? To me, it sends the message that if you have debt, you're not X, Y, Z. You're not good enough. You're not doing it right. You're not perfect all of those things. And I just think it's very unfair to use this black and white judgment of of debt. What I want you to have is a plan. I've talked about this on previous episodes. There's two ways to pay off debt for the rest of your life. You don't need to be a money expert. You don't need a crazy spreadsheet. You need to either take the lowest debt first or the highest interest rate first. And you're going to pay minimum payments on all the other debt, but the one that you're attacking first and you're going to put any extra cash you got in the month into paying off that debt. Once it's paid off, you're going to roll that money that you've been paying on to the next one. It's a very simple system, but it's a strategy and it works. And again, it doesn't have to be complex. You just need to work the strategy. I've had a few episodes on debt payoff. Go back and look at those if you're in that situation. I'll, I'll put some links in the show notes as well. But again, mindset is is key here. Positive app affirmations to yourself. Things like, I'm actively taking the steps to get out of debt, even if it feels like it's a slow process. And also repeatedly telling yourself, I'm not my debt. I'm not my debt. My debt does not define me. I am not my debt. There will be a day where I am debt free. All of that work tells your brain, all right, we can do it. One step, one step. We're doing one thing after the next thing. We're going to attack our plan. We're going to work on our debt. And if we get back into debt, no biggie. We have the tool in the toolkit. We can pull out again and get ourselves out. So if you are somebody who's been in debt, I mean, I'm right there with you. So there's no judgment here, but I want you to balance everything with smart spending. Really knowing how to save and spend your money efficiently is is super important. The holidays are coming up and my fear, so many of us have been in in lockdown and uh, I hope that we don't all go crazy and spend a ton of money that we don't have. So what I want you to do is just really think about every penny you spend wisely. Is it helping you getting to get closer to your goals? Is it helping you pay down your debt? Is, is it helping you move in the right direction? If you can keep yourself present, if you can keep your mindset positive, and you can keep reaffirming that today, just today, because that's all you've got is today. You don't have yesterday. You don't have tomorrow yet. But if you can focus on today, what can I do to help myself get out of debt or to change my mindset around debt until I can get out of debt. That is when you start turning that money mistake into something super positive. All right, number two, paying too much for something. (laughs) We're all going to pay too much for something. I mean, we're going to do it time and time again. That car story that I shared earlier in the episode, I just bought a new SUV that was pretty darn expensive. I was able to write off a fair amount of depreciation through this special tax code. 
So it made the vehicle a little bit more affordable, but I still had to make those monthly payments and they were pricey, <laughs> like way more than I should have spent on a particular car. But I had had my heart sat on this car and with two incomes, it, it was more affordable. And when I got divorced, it was me alone that had to make that car payment. I had to refinance it to get my ex-husband off the car which made the car payment even higher. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, I'm just, I got to just settle in and make this happen, make this car payment. And I paid off the thing all by myself. It was a ton of cash, but I was proud of myself that I did it, that I, that I made it happen. So maybe you don't have something quite as extreme as, as that, but we've all paid too much for something. And I think that's a mistake that's okay. It's okay. We have, we're, we're humans, right? There are things we want to do. We're going to pay too much for something, and and that's okay. And number three is forgetting to pay a bill. I remember the first time I forgot to pay a bill, and I have this weird, uh, I don't know if it's weird, but I have this affliction where I feel like I always have to be perfect. I have to say the perfect things. I have to do the perfect things. I have to be perfect. In every way, I feel like perfection is something that I learned super early on. I think maybe I thought if I'm perfect, I'll get people's attention, people's praise. If I'm not, then I won't. And I just really wanted to be liked by people, which sounds, it sounds strange when I say it that way. But I remember the first time I forgot to pay a bill, I literally had like a full on panic moment thinking that I had just made the worst money mistake ever in human history. And then, of course, I learned that everybody forgets to pay a bill. <laughs> so it, it happens, especially in times of stress or if you have a lot going on, it's really easy to just forget to pay the dang thing. But the important thing is when you notice that you forget to pay something, in that moment that you've noticed it, take some action and, and try to do it as quick as possible. Don't put it off. You know, call if it's a credit card or if it's it's some bill that you forgot to pay, call the co company. Ask them to waive the late fee if there is a late fee and ask them to not report it to the credit bureaus. Usually if you're within like a 30-day time period, you're kind of in the safe zone. You still might get a late payment. So make sure that you ask to have that reversed. They're not automatically going to reverse it, but that could be like $20, $30 right there that you probably have way more better things to do with than to pay it towards a late fee. So always ask, can I get the late fee waived? If it impacts your credit score, if if you are 60, 90 days plus out and you realize, oh my God, I totally forgot to pay that thing. Don't panic. It's okay. It's really okay. It's not going to be the end of the world. I promise you it's not the end of the world. I'm a big fan of auto pay. I like to auto pay everything. I have too many things going on that if I had to remember when everything was due, it just, it wouldn't happen. So I just made it easier on myself. I use auto pay. It comes out of my bank account. Of course, you got to make sure the money's in your bank account, which I understand for some people, maybe you get down to a small amount in your bank account. And so auto pay just doesn't feel as comfy to you, but set up a system so you can win at this whether it's notes in your phone, alarms in your phone, post-it notes, whatever it whatever it is, whatever works for you, find a system so that you can at least try to avoid forgetting to pay a bill. And if you forget to pay it, eh, whatever. <laughs> Number four is, is missing out on the quote unquote next big investment opportunity. I've had so many people say to me, oh my gosh, it was such a big mistake. I didn't invest in X, Y, or Z. But no one has a crystal ball. No one really knows what's going to happen. No one could predict it this year. Really, no one saw this coming. So if, if you feel like you've missed an investment opportunity, it's not that big of a deal. But start somewhere. You know, there are apps like Acorns or Elvest, or maybe you have a 401k through your work, or you've set up an IRA. Just start somewhere. Start investing. Get educated about investing. There are lots of books. We've had a lot of 
great people on this show that have talked about investing and have talked about this idea that there really isn't such thing as the next big great investment. Sure, if we all would have known about Apple stock or Google stock or I could go on and on, we would have invested in those. We would have, right? But we didn't. So we're in the place that we're in now and all we can do is control today. So just a gentle reminder, don't put that pressure on yourself because it's completely unwarranted. All right, number five money mistake, draining your savings. All right, it's it's called savings for a reason. It's meant to be spent from time to time. You, we talk about emergency funds, three to six months of your fixed expenses have, have saved in a separate account. I've talked about the importance of high yield savings accounts that pay more interest than your traditional bank account. But emergency fund, just by the name of it, it's meant to ebb and flow. It's meant for you to drain that thing from time to time and then fill it back up. Savings are there for a reason. Savings are there for you to spend that money on something. You're saving for something, for a house, for a trip, for a car, for a wardrobe, whatever it may be. You're saving for something. So let this be your permission slip to be a little, a tiny bit irresponsible from time to time. Not always. So I don't want you to always drain your savings. If that's happening, we need to figure out why that's happening. But there are times where it's just like, you know what? Forget it. I just, I want to buy this thing and it's going to drain my savings, but I have a plan for how I'm going to build it back up, right? No big deal. So I'm giving you permission, drain your savings from time to time. It's actually quite refreshing <laughs> to be like, yeah, all right, all right, I can build this thing back up. And number six is not having a perfect credit score. There's a lot of pressure on credit score that you have to have this ideal number. Now, I'm going to talk about this with, with a little bit of a grain of salt. So your credit score ranges from 300 to 850. If you're just starting out, if you're just out of college, you're listening to this episode, you might have either no credit score or a really low credit score. That's okay. You're, you're new to this. You're building over time. If you're in your late 20s, if you're in your 30s or early 40s or whatever, I don't care what number is, is uh, your age. I don't care what number it is. It's okay for your score to change over time. Again, scores 300 to 850, 740 to 850 is the ideal range for your credit score. That's where you're going to get the best interest rates on things. But credit score a lot of times is a work in progress. Your money story is also a journey. It's not a destination. So you can recover from credit score mistakes, credit score blips, the two things that you really need to focus on is what is your credit utilization? So that is how much credit are you using versus the amount that is available? We've talked about on other episodes, there are all sorts of little tricks you can use, even things as crazy as opening another credit card, which uh, widens that gap between available and used credit. But basically, you want to keep your credit utilization to 30% or less. So if my credit limit on a particular card is $1,000, I want to try to make sure I don't have more than $300 charged on that in any given time. Now, if I, let's say I have to buy something, it's $900, but I pay it off within the month. Cool. I've kept my cre credit utilization where I need it to be. So that's one of the best ways. The second uh, way is just to pay your bills on time. We already talked about that mistake. So if it happens, it happens. But just focus on paying everything on time. And I'm going to repeat this over and over and over again, but just focus on today. Be here now. If you don't have a pre perfect credit score, what can you do today that helps get your credit score a little bit better? Maybe it's even as simple as, hey, I'm just going to look at my credit card balances or the other loans I have, I'm going to look at what my interest rates are, what I owe, what my minimum payments are. And I'm going to think about, is there any extra money I can today 
drive towards paying those off or lowering that credit utilization. So it's simple, simple steps, simple steps, right? We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to change the world today. We just need to make little simple steps. And money mistake number seven that is okay to make, one of my favorites, (laughs) is taking a lower paying job particularly in America. I know we have a lot of people listening from other countries and things are hopefully a little bit different in your country, but I know particularly in America, there's pressure on, you got to earn more, you got to earn more, you got to have a better job, you got to make the six figures, the seven figures. It's this endless cycle of earning more, earning more, earning more. But is that really making you happy or is that not? These are questions that are really important questions to stop and ask yourself. If you make money the end all be all, you're giving it more power than it deserves. Money's just this tool. It's a tool in the toolkit, right? We use the money when we need to. I understand we need money. So don't misinterpret what I'm saying here. It's obvious we live in a world we need money. Money creates opportunity. Money creates options. All of those things are very real realities. But if taking a lower paying job makes you happy, takes away anxiety or depression, makes you feel like you're fulfilling your purpose, then that's okay. Because if you're following that direction, you will eventually make more money. Maybe not. I don't know. But usually when you're following in the direction that you think you're supposed to go, that in itself opens up opportunities and that in itself creates uh, better better jobs, better titles, better pay, better opportunities. I don't know, whatever it is. We're all, we're all completely individual here. But so many people stay stuck in a career or in a job that they hate, absolutely hate, and it makes them miserable because they're so afraid to earn less money because we've created this society and this culture that if you earn less, somehow you are less. And that needs to be eradicated because that's absolutely not true. So I'm giving you permission to just look at these areas of your life. Look at these mistakes and normalize them. Don't make them so big and weighty. Mistakes happen. Focus on what you can control what you can do today. And also take a look at your money mindset. I know I talk about a lot on the show, but it really is the thing that gives you the edge when you can keep money in its place. And today I want you to think about what if things were just a little bit better? What if you were a little closer to your goals? What if listening to this episode like opened up one little thought pattern in your brain that created just one little small change? Focus on that rather than on the mistakes you've made. And I think your bumper sticker message for the day is, yeah, I've made some money mistakes and I'm going to make some more, but that does not define me. you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com, where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.